Hello, and welcome to Community Conversations, a show that's for and about the people who live in Reading. My name is Kevin Vent, and I'm going to be your host for this episode. And later on in this episode, we're going to explore the work of the Democratic and Republican town committees. But first, our Kevin Walsh sat down with two people who are interested in helping the senior citizens of our community. He sat down with attorney Brian Snell. But first, let's have Jane Burns, who is the Administrator of Elder and Human Services here in Reading. Let's listen in on that conversation now. I am here with Jane Burns, the Director of Elder and Human Services here at the Town of Reading. Welcome, Jane. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. We are here to kind of update people as to what's going on with the Council on Aging, what's going on with Human and Elder Services here in town. I know uh, that there's an awful lot of activities here in town, but it's uh, an awful lot of people don't use it. I always go back to my parents. You know, they live down in Milton. What services do they use? So for the people that are wondering what services are available here, could you give us a little bit of an overview? Certainly. For those that are not familiar with Elder and Human Services, we're a division of the town of Reading, and we provide a variety of services from support and entertainment and socialization and transportation to Reading residents, um, seniors 60 and over. And that can be a variety of different services depending upon what the resident requires. Whether they're aging at home, wanting mm. to remain in their home, struggling with medical appointments and understanding um, medical directives, or looking to branch out and get out of their home and enjoy their golden years mm -hmm. socializing mm -hmm. within the community or taking a trip to the flower and garden show for instance. Well I know there's an awful lot that uh, that goes on. Um, now what would you do if you are you know you're saying to yourself geez I'm 70 years old and I want to get out do you, do you call uh, Human and Elder Services? Do you go down to the Senior Center? Do you get onto a website? Some, some of these seniors now can get on a website. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do to get in contact and get an idea of what's going on with uh, elder services, with, with seniors in town? Well, there's a variety of different ways to reach out to elder services. If you're looking for an activity, you can look at our monthly newsletter called The Pleasantries. That's available throughout town and online. Mm -hmm. Or you can just stop into the Senior Center, or as we call it, the Pleasant Street Center. Very good. And speak with the receptionist, speak with the coordinator or one of the staff members there, or you can give a phone call to myself or one of the staff members and we'd be happy to talk with you about the different services that we have to offer. So for seniors that want to stay at home, there's a lot of services as well. Mm -hmm. um, I know my parents, I'd love to see them get involved in some of the lunch programs. I'd love to see them go to the senior center. My father's uh, 83 and uh, he thinks he's, uh, it's for people older than himself and uh, I remind him that it's not. So you always, you, you always deal with that barrier. But let me ask you a question. When it comes to transportation here in mm -hmm. town, is that the way that some of the seniors get to know about all the other services and they meet at the other people? Well, one of the best ways to learn about transportation is really to give us a call and speak with our senior case manager, Kerry mm -hmm. Valley, or myself, because we have a variety of transportation options both for shopping and getting about to the mall or sure. to the library, but also for medical transportation. We have a very unique program here in Reading that provides medical transportation, not just for seniors, for all residents to get them to their doctor's appointments or dentist appointments or physical therapy. And those just aren't doctors here in the community. The service provides transportation to doctors um, outlying the community as well. So what does the transportation typically look, look like if someone wants to go to lunch uh, at the senior center? Well, we have two, two vans in elder services I see. now. Um, one van we operate on a routine schedule. It takes folks to the grocery stores. Um, oh, that's terrific. It, it takes folks to the mall, Woburn Mall. Um, we go to Target, we go to Walmart. And then we also go to all the programs at the center. So it brings folks to lunch every day. Right. Or if we're having a special a program at the center, it'll give folks a ride. And that's door-to-door -door service, Kevin. That okay. will pick folks up at their home, mm -hmm. bring them to Stop and Shop or Market Basket, and then bring them back to home. That van does operate on a set schedule. 
I see. So let, let me know how this, uh, give me an idea how this day would look like. In other words, they would pick you up at 11 o'clock mm -hmm. or 10 o'clock, and then they would do something and then get to the senior center at, at 11 or something? You so know, if you were living in your home and you needed to go grocery shopping, we have one day of the week that the van would pick you up and you would call the center right. and sign up for the van to go grocery shopping. About 45 minutes before the schedule to get to the store, the van would pick you up at your door, bring you to Stop and Shop or Market Basket, whichever right. you prefer, mm -hmm. drop you off at Market Basket. You could do your shopping. You'd have about an hour or so, maybe an hour and a half. The van would come back and pick you up and bring you home. If you also wanted to attend the Senior Center for lunch, the van would take you to the Senior Center, the Pleasant Street Center, drop you off, you would have lunch, you could stay for a movie if it was movie day, mm -hmm. and at the end of that program, the van would pick you up at the center and bring you back home again. That's, uh, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> let's talk about the Senior Center, or the Pleasant Street Center. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know there's an awful lot going on. I'm very excited. As, as we're filming this show right uh, today, it's uh, the day before St. Patrick's Day. And tomorrow, for example, you have some dancers and singers that are coming by to help celebrate uh, St. Patrick's Day. And, you know, it's funny when it comes to music like that. I love the traditional music. I don't like the, the new Irish music. I love the old Irish music. Um, so it's a good example of a day that you provide uh, for the seniors. Uh, now, I know that's booked up, like mm -hmm. a lot of your, your things, uh, a lot of the events you have get booked up very quickly. Uh, but for, for those seniors, they would get picked up in the morning at, at 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning, uh, and they have to pick up a couple other people, so it does mm -hmm. take a few minutes. Right. Uh, and then they get to the senior center. Uh, they get off. They have a wonderful meal. They have entertainment. How long is something like that, for example? Well, the program is a lunch program, so I believe the driver would start picking folks up depending upon how many he has to pick up sometime between 11 and 11.30. Tomorrow we have a large crowd. We have 70 people coming for a corned beef luncheon with um, Irish, well, Celtic folk music. So we have a lot of folks coming, so the van ride would be a little bit longer than most right. days. Um, so you'd be picked up around 11 o'clock. Um, you'd get to the center maybe around 11.30, quarter of 12. The music starts at 12.30, lunch is at 12, music is at 12.30, it's over at 1.30, it's a one hour one concert, good. and then at 1.30 the van driver would bring you home. What a terrific day that mm -hmm. is. Uh, I know, I hope to stop by tomorrow um, and at least see what's going on. Mm -hmm. I know you can't get in right now. Could you talk about some of the other, um, you know, events you have coming up? You know, and I know this show might be showed, you know, for a couple, shown for a couple years over the, you know, the next few years. So it's, you know, it's just, it gives you people an idea of the kind of things you have going on all, to, all the time. What are some of the other events uh, that, that are happening? Well, we have run programs every single day. We run exercise five days a week, a variety of different exercises, everything from Zumba Gold to uh, BEST, which is balance, energy, and strength training. So you can see that it's really a wide variety of exercise that we run every day. We have lunch every day. We have movies twice a week. We have entertainment every month. This month, um, the Reading Firefighters are hosting okay. uh, dinner at the end of the month, another event that um, has sold out very quickly. But they are providing a dinner, and they will be serving it um, much like the police do in the fall. Um, they're doing it this month. We also are having a sleep awareness program this month. Really? Isn't that interesting? The, you, you know when you're tired, you don't yeah. function as well during the day. <laughs> <laughs> and seniors, much like many people, suffer from various sleep disorders and difficulty sleeping. Sure. So we have a nurse from Hallmark Health coming in to talk about various sleep challenges and how to overcome them. We do have a giveaway as part of that program. Someone will go home with a memory foam pillow. Uh, we, Boy, that sounds good. Uh, <laughs> Maybe a guy qualify here? Yeah. We also <laughs> have, um, the reg in April, we have the Registry of Motor Vehicles is coming. To you know, do I've seen that before. That What a wonderful program right. that is. To do a program on distracted driving. And these programs are all for free. When we run a special program mm -hmm. with a speaker, there's no cost to seniors. They're welcome to come to the program. 
get a, get a little education and hopefully go home learning something new. Sure. Also in April, uh, the Sheriff's Office is coming to do a program on April 4th, a lunch program wow. on scams that affect not just seniors, but non-seniors as well. Anything from telephone scams to mail scams to door-to-door -door salesmen. And we're working in cooperation with the Reading Police Department on that program. And that's a really important program, not just for seniors, but for all. And I'm hoping that you'll come back and videotape that for oh, us Oh, you know, as it was well. uh, absolutely terrific. Uh, and I also heard that you have a show coming up on uh, Truly Eleanor. Yes. Uh, which is about one of my fa favorite characters in history, Eleanor Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell us a little bit about that show and, uh, and how seniors could get involved in, in seeing that? Right. That show is called Truly Eleanor, and it's about uh, it's a historical play about Eleanor Roosevelt. The play is about an hour to an hour and a half long. Right at the Pleasant Street it's Center. It's right at the center. You can come for lunch and stay for the show. Fantastic. And it's done by the Delvina Theatre Group, which is a acting trio that come out. And they've done numerous plays for us before in other communities, and they do an excellent job. After the play, they will the actors will stick around and answer any questions you may have, and they really base this play on the facts and of in the life of Eleanor Roosevelt, and it's gotten rave reviews. We're very excited to have them, and this play came to us through a grant from the Reading Cultural Council, so we're very grateful okay. to the Cultural Council uh, for offering us this grant. Well, we certainly have a lot going on at the Senior Center. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything from the, uh, the basics, the, the survival kind of stuff, you know, that you, you can help coordinate uh, food coming to their house, services coming to their house. You can help them uh, to go to the doctor, for example, mm -hmm. with transportation. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, you know, certainly can uh, <clears throat> assist even, even people like myself. I remember at 56 years old, I'm calling the the Council on Aging because you've trained me mm -hmm. uh, down in Milton for different services. Um, <clears throat> you know, we talked. Uh, we're not going to get into it today, but we've talked about the Safe Box program. Yes, the Knox Box. Um, with our Knox Box program, um, which is a program to get into in an emergency situation, emergency situation to get into a house of a senior. Um, Milton was. Uh, I had to educate them a little bit about because Reading is ahead of other communities when it comes to, to things like that. So it's very interesting. But if someone from outside of town as well uh, wants to find out about the services that uh, the Council on Aging and uh, the uh, Human and Elder Services and Reading uh, provide, you call Jane Burns and you call her staff. Um, and they're, they're wonderful. I know you spend an awful lot of time, um, you know, doing things. Um, and, and participating here in, in town, um, sometimes it's, uh, it's admirable. Um, so any other thoughts on, on what seniors should be thinking when they think about the services in Reading? Uh, any, any message you want to you kind of end with? Uh? Well, the message I really want seniors and adult children with senior parents is to know that they're really not alone in the community, that there's a large variety of support services and we all feel at some point in time we need a little boost and we need a little help and that's what we're there for. We're there to help seniors to feel that they can remain safely in the community, in their home and in our staff will really go the extra mile to help folks whether it's getting them a lifeline, um, the, to have a, a call button if they were to fall mm or to get a meal or to get some guidance on how to be able to remain safely at home. Folks in this community are not alone that we are here to support you whether it's coming out to visit you at home or you can come and visit us in the office. Well thank you very much. I'd like to thank you all for joining us here on Community Conversation. We will see you next time. Welcome back to Community Conversation. Next up we have attorney Brian Snell here in studio. Let's listen in. With me here tonight, today is Brian Snell, attorney in town here in Reading. Uh, we're going to talk about a number of issues, legal issues, and a lot of issues to do with seniors uh, here in town. Both Brian and I are on the Council on Aging. Brian is the vice chair uh, because I like to think he's smarter than me. <laughs> um, anyway, there's, um, we're doing a lot of stuff, so let's get right to it. Uh, can you remind us, before we get into some of the senior issues, just uh, some of the legal documents that a senior should have 
as he gets older, as she gets older. Sure. Um, you know, a lot of people call the office and they think that a trust is what they need to have. And, and generally what I'm concerned with are documents that are important during someone's lifetime. A power of attorney where you've delegated that responsibility off to someone else if um, you don't have the capacity to, to do things. A health care proxy is somebody who would mm -hmm. make health care decisions for you when you become unable to make those decisions yourself. A HIPAA authorization is where you um, get privacy clearance and, and identify individuals who are going to need to be able to help you make health care decisions or find out about your health care status at any given point in time or a living will that is out there to kind of um, mm -hmm. denote the quality of life that you want to have over the quantity of life. So I think it was interesting, Brian, that you talked about um, a, a lot of different things, the power of attorney, the, the health care proxy, etc., uh, but you didn't mention a will in the beginning. Right, and the reason that I didn't mention a will, Kevin, is because if you have a typical situation of a husband and a wife or you've got some kids and everybody's in good standing, then a will doesn't necessarily have to happen because you've got the state has a backup plan for you. You know, if you have some extenuating circumstances or you want to involve or remember friends or charities or something to that effect, then a will is definitely important. But um, those other documents that I mentioned are going to prevent and save you a lot of money down the road if you don't have to get a conservatorship or a guardianship. Right. Now, I, I know money always comes up, and I'm kind of skipping around a little bit, but, you know, what happens to a senior who needs that power of attorney, who needs that health care proxy, and they're just, uh, they just don't want to part with the money? With, with the cost to, to the cost uh, establish to it? it? Um, <laughs> that, that's a good, uh, a good question, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's really no way around that, right. I think. I mean, if you, if you, if you don't have those documents and something happens where you no longer retain the capacity to make your own decisions, then the only way for your family is to get a conservatorship or a guardianship, which right. costs thousands of dollars instead of a couple of hundred dollars. So you got to do it. All right, let's talk about help at home uh, and perhaps the legal issues to do with that. People try to uh, stay at home for as long as they can in many circumstances. Right, and I think that Reading is very um, good at trying to, to keep their residents in their homes. Um, you know, before you get to that point where you need to downsize because you can't manage your home, there are definitely resources out there where where you can get people to come in and help. You know, Mystic Valley Elder Services is the, um, is the primary agency that serves this, this area. Um, but before you even call them, you want to be calling, you know, Jane Burns at the um, El Elder Services Department of Health and Human Services. Um, Kevin Bomer is the, bel the uh, mm. veterans agent. There are service programs out there where they can be able to help if your income qualifies in that respect. So that's help at home. Let's move to um, the next step, which I guess would be assisted living for some people. They're going to have to deal with it at a, or they may have to deal with it at some point. Uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, assisted living is has changed a lot over the last several years. Um, it's not unusual for there to be a, a pretty um, broad continuum of care that's provided in these institutions or, or residents. Um, you can go from a completely independent perspective where you're just kind of maybe enjoying your meals are pre-cooked for you at, in the general dining room to where there's some level of assistance provided whether it's with um, assistance with bathing dressing or just medication reminders and then lastly if there's um, you know an Alzheimer's or dementia has has creeped up on someone then there are memory care uh, facilities where they do that much more and they keep you in a better a more protective environment so that you can't necessarily Necessarily leave the environment. You might be a wanderer, a wanderer, or, or a fall risk, or something to that effect. Um, so there, we tr there's a lot of service that's provided in those institutions. Mm -hmm. But the ultimate goal is to keep you as independent as possible. You know, there's a, a lot of issues that become very personal for people. I know for myself, uh, my parents are, are in their 80s. Um, they're in a, a very difficult uh, house where there's three stories, and I, I always worry about a fall. Uh, and I'm always telling my father, I said, you know, you, you, you taught me that I always needed to have a plan, and, and right now you need to plan a little bit better. It's a very difficult thing uh, when, it, when parents finally have to understand that they may have to move to a better physical setup, perhaps, you know, on one floor. 
Um, so it's, uh, it can be very touchy. Um, any thoughts on the, the money aspect uh, of it? You know, people, you know, obviously seniors, they're all concerned uh, uh, that uh, they don't want to spend their last dollar on, on legal issues, on nursing homes. Uh, is, there, uh, is there any way to, to avoid it? Any thoughts? Well, I think the one thing to remember is, um, and, and this is a hard lesson for um, people that are in the senior generation right now, is, you know, they've kind of squandered and s squirreled away their savings because their ultimate goal is usually to be able to pass that on to their children. Um, whereas I think, you know, people that are more of in our generation are more looking at it from the perspective of, well, I'm going to save what I need to save to pay for my my care, but otherwise I'm going to um, spend my money. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, one thing to take into consideration is is you've saved all this time. You should be able to spend the money to to the extent that you need to right. spend it. These services are not inexpensive. Assisted living care is is all private pay, um, with the exception of a variety of places that are tied to the PACE program through Mass Health. Um, but once you get into a, a nursing home, there are ways to save some money. Um, you know we can do a do different types of planning that that purchase annuities or 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 um, or or sell your assets such that that they they continue to be productive and so the and old uh, the old system of three years before put all your assets in somebody else's name doesn't work anymore well you know <laughs> the, the look back period is now five years but yeah. even if you did that you have to have a lot of confidence in the whoever you're putting their your money into um, and that's that's not something that we would just kind of willy-nilly yeah. recommend. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just kidding. I, I know it's all changed, and uh, I know even even annuities may not in the future protect the way that they do right now. Um, so anyway, that's uh, th that's Brian. Any other thoughts before we wrap it up today? Any anything for the people at home? I, I think that um, just just to to make note of the fact that um, you know my goal is not to kind of perform unnecessary. Um, documents for you. Um, like I said, a lot of people come into my office, they think they need a trust, and more times than not, they don't need a trust. Um, I want you to have as much control over your finances and your decisions as you can have, and um, I try to charge a fair and reasonable um, fee for to, to accomplish that. Well, thank you. That's Attorney Brian Snell. Um, we'd like to thank you for joining us uh, here today thank you. on Community Conversation. Both the Republican and Democratic town committees here in Reading are very active. Let's listen in on what their work is all about. Uh, we uh, hold candidate forums for candidates to come and present positions, policy ideas, get to meet our membership. Um, we hold, uh, help them organize local fundraisers for their campaigns. And on election day, um, you know, we, we help them with uh, get out the vote activities. It's either going to um, an office and making, helping make phone calls to encourage people to go out and vote and track people that way, or, you know, show up at the polls with, you know, everyone's favorite activity, sign holding. Um, you know, some Novembers, it can be quite chilly out there, but, you know, it's part of the process. So we, right. we're happy to do it. We we'll probably do less, believe it or not, in a presidential year because it's national and we're more based locally and statewide. So presidential years, it's more about individuals advocating for their candidates. And then when the party coalesces and we have a nominee, that's when our group's work really starts. We did a straw poll four years ago for the first in the nation New Hampshire primary, and it turned out to be a pretty good turnout. It's one of the bigger fundraisers we do for our group. So we decided this year to try to do the second annual. And uh, we had a great turnout much like the first year, and I think we're going to try to do, make this a every four-year thing, every presidential cycle, try to have a little straw poll. Members came around and they could vote for their candidates. Uh, there was food discussion, and we watched the results come in from New Hampshire in real time. Marco Rubio came away at the top. He was followed closely by Governor Chris Christie, and I believe Donald Trump finished third. We have a, a monthly meeting here at RCTV. And that is basically just going over a committee business. But every once in a while, we'll get a guest speaker or uh, a candidate sometimes will come in and address the group. And we can bring in 
in addition to our members, just other people from the community. We have an annual uh, fundraiser for the Reading Veterans Memorial Trust Fund. Uh, it's a fund that provides the uh, decorations for all our veterans graves on Memorial Day and Veterans Day and the capital is in danger of not being replenished in that fund. They end up spending more than the interest um, bears for, for the fund. So we do an event that's open to the entire committee. It's strictly nonpartisan and we've had very good turnout. I think uh, the first two years alone we raised over fifteen hundred dollars so you know it, it's a way that we can be civic minded and, and engage in our community in a non-political way uh, as opposed to always focusing on uh, the politics this is it, it's it, it feels really good to be able to give back to the community in this way um, every city and town of Massachusetts has um, a Democratic or Republican town committee and they're basically the official bodies uh, for the state party um, in the locality. So um, our responsibility really is to educate the community on the candidates and issues that are of importance to the Democratic Party, um, to work on campaigns, um, to hold forums on um, issues of public concern, um, and to make sure that the interests of the Democratic Party are represented um, when there are elections going on. Each year, the state Democratic Party um, holds a state convention. Um, and so um, usually around February or March, uh, we'll have a local caucus to elect delegates to the state convention. And any registered Democrat in town actually can come to the caucus, which is sponsored by the town committee. But any registered Democrat could stand for election to be a delegate um, or alternate. Um, to the convention or participate in the voting in, within the caucus for the folks who are going to represent us at the convention. In any kind of primary, um, the Democratic Town Committee doesn't actually take sides. Um, so, you know, we'll respect the wide range of views and candidates that may be competing um, for the nomination of the Democratic Party. Um, as individuals, the Town Committee members are certainly encouraged to get involved and advocate on behalf uh, of their chosen candidates. So this year, um, you know, we have activists who are um, taking part in both uh, the uh, Democratic campaigns. Um, so folks are out um, knocking on doors, making telephone calls, um, uh, you know, all the sort of normal kinds of um, political activity folks are pursuing now in um, anticipation of the March 1st primary. Typically, if you see the Democratic Town Committee at an event like Friends and Family Day in the, uh, the summer or uh, the Fall Street Fair, we'll be there with voter registration forms and be reminding folks, particularly when we see young people, hey, um, if your 18th birthday is coming up, you should uh, get registered to vote. Like any organization collecting voter registration forms, we don't care what party you register in. We're just um, interested in, in folks doing that. Um, and then. Um, you know, once the nomination is set, we'll be active out there, um, you know, fighting on behalf of, of our candidate and reminding folks about the upcoming election. Thank you for joining us here today on this episode of Community Conversation. Thank you to all of our guests, and be sure to look for our future episodes. Have a great day.